Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Samsung HWQ990D 11.1.4 channel wireless Dolby Atmos soundbar with Q Symphony. And while I stated earlier in the year I thought the Sony Theater Bar 9 was the one to get, well, Samsung has entered the chat. This time the experience includes a sub and rear speakers, and you'll want to take note as this just may be the newest best soundbar of 2024. Let's talk about it. Now before we begin, if you're a subscriber and you're wondering where I've been since I haven't uploaded in a few months, well, back in July, I became deathly ill, the worst sickness I've ever experienced in my life, and after repeated ER visits, we finally figured out we were suffering from black mold toxicity. Unfortunately, by that time, spores and toxins had spread throughout our entire unit, which led to a total loss of property. Everything from my home studio, my camera gear, my home theater, down to the clothes on our backs, it was a total loss loss and since insurance doesn't cover mold in the state of Texas, starting over has been 100% out of pocket. I'm finally at the point where thanks to many of the brands I work with, I've been able to replace most of it, but I'm now left with neurological issues that I can only hope fade with time. But with all that said, if you're looking to purchase this unit and you haven't done so yet, consider using my link in the description. It doesn't cost you anything and earns me a couple of dollars on the side. As this is now my only source of income, it really would mean a lot, so let's get back to the video. So you get the Q990 bar itself, a set of rear speakers, and a sub for the retail price of $1,999. However, you can find it on sale. The lowest I've seen so far is $1,499. Keep an eye out, especially with Black Friday prices around the corner. Now, one of the first things you'll notice when unboxing is that this thing is a beast. In fact, it's the heaviest soundbar I've owned so far. The bar has a width of 48 and a half inches, a depth of 5.4 inches, a height of 2.7 inches, and weighs in around 17 pounds. The sub is a decent size with a height and depth of about 16 inches, a width of about 8.6 inches, and weight around 26 pounds, while the rear speakers are about 8 inches tall with a depth of 5.5 inches, a width of 5 inches, and weigh in at 7.5 pounds each. Now, because of the soundbar's hefty size, you'll want to pair it with a 65-inch TV or bigger, maybe a 55, but any less, and it'll dwarf your TV. You'll also want a solid TV stand that can accommodate the size and weight. It's got 11 front-facing speakers, though I could only visibly see these two on each end of the front, two on the outside, and two on the top, one sub, and four up-firing channels, which use your ceiling and walls to reflect sound back at you. The rear speakers have one speaker facing you directly, one to the side, and one facing up, which, once again, use your walls and ceiling to bounce sound back at you. Now, this could be problematic depending on your space as I have acoustic treatment, like these GIK bass traps and acoustic curtains, which will absorb some of that sound meant to be bounced back at you. The solution and the proper way to experience Atmos is to have speakers firing from above, but that defeats the purpose of a soundbar. It's also not something you'd want to do if you're renting. You'll have to decide what you're willing to compromise for your space. To get better sound, you can pair it with a compatible Samsung TV using Q Symphony, which will sync your devices together so the soundbar uses your TV speakers in conjunction with it creating a wider soundstage and more immersive image. You can use an HDMI cable via eARC ports or use its wireless Dolby Atmos feature, but honestly, a little cable management goes a long way, and whether it's Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or whatever wireless technology, hardwired is always going to be the best for the best performance. Now, features you may find important include Space Fit Sound Pro, which calibrates the soundbar to your environment by analyzing your room acoustics and optimizing the sound, Adaptive Sound, which analyzes the audio in real time so you can hear dialogue and other important elements at low volume, and AVA or Active Voice Analyzer, which breaks down room noise and makes dialogue clear. It's Samsung's version of a dialogue enhancer, which almost every soundbar has these days, but it doesn't kill the mids like some of the competition. In the end, and I chose to keep it off. For gamers, you have Game Mode Pro, which offers a more 3D audio image, as well as 4K 120Hz pass-through, but honestly, with everything I've been dealing with, I didn't really test gameplay like I normally would. I apologize. And while it has 120Hz pass-through for your consoles, if you have multiple devices, you'll want to just connect them to your TV and use eARC for audio to the soundbar. Now for those that stream music or like voice control, it's got built-in Alexa, Chromecast, AirPlay 2, and more, and Tap Sound, which lets you tap the soundbar with your phone and start streaming, kind of like a quick resume. 
So let's talk performance. I watched a few movies from Alita Battle Angel to Infinity War, and it shines in just about every scenario, but if you haven't seen it yet, you need to watch 1917, which takes the cake and is now one of my top movies for testing home theater equipment. The audio is just that good, and if you heard a demo of certain scenes in a store, you'd be taking this soundbar home. Now there's a scene about a quarter of the way through where a plane flies overhead, and the transition from the rear speakers to the front is one of the most realistic demos demonstrations you'll ever hear, the soundbar absolutely excels with big effects and when orchestra arrangements peak and hit their climax, you'll be fully engaged in the action. And in my case, where I was coming from a full home theater build, so my ears were focused on what was missing, I quickly forgot and adjusted and was 100% satisfied with what my ears were hearing. I found no need to use AVA to enhance dialogue as it did a great job as is. If there's any complaint I can see coming from users, it's that the bass isn't the strongest I've heard out of a soundbar sub, and if you're in an apartment that's totally okay, as I think it's at a near perfect level for respecting your neighbors. Now if you own a house and you want that earth shattering bass, you're not going to find it here. It's subjective, and while I was good with the level it put out, you might think it's lacking. I think it's a good talking point, so if you already own this soundbar, let me know in the comments whether you're happy with the subwoofer or if you feel like it needs more power. In terms of the competition, the only other soundbar I've heard so far, which included rear speakers, was the LG S95TR, which I found disappointing, so I really think the Theater Bar 9 from Sony may be the only competition in terms of this year's new releases. Uh, because of the loss I experienced, it's kind of up in the air, but I'm trying to get a replacement Theater Bar 9, this time with rears and a sub, so I can get the full experience Sony offers and do a follow-up video, and if that happens, I'll let you know which one I prefer. If I hadn't been dealing with all these issues, I would have been more thorough as I didn't do any testing when it comes to gaming or music performance, but for movies, you're going to love it. Now, I did catch some sports and regular TV with the Spectrum app, and it's only going to sound as good as whatever the source is, but I was happy, and I think you will be too. Now, all that said, while I think the Q990D is a fantastic soundbar, there is still something missing that you just can't get from a soundbar, so stay tuned as I'm going to show you how to build a proper home theater specifically built for an apartment where you can still get amazing surround without overdoing it when it comes to bass and making neighbors complain. Now, I'll put that link above now once it's finished, and it'll be at the end of the video to transition you into it when it's done. The Q990D is definitely at the top, the cream of the crop amongst Atmos soundbars, but once you've heard a proper Atmos home theater with actual downward facing speakers versus bouncing sound off the walls, it's a game changer and just can't be ignored. Now, I hope this video has helped you and you have to excuse me if you felt like I could have done a little bit more. This extreme brain fog and chronic fatigue are no joke and it's going to take a huge effort on my part to stay consistent and deliver top quality content on a regular basis. But again, if you decide to buy, I'd super appreciate you using my links. It's more important now than ever, so thank you to those that do. Now, that's going to wrap things up for today. If you made it this far into the video and enjoyed this content, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to join me on this this journey and stay in the know when I release new uploads. I'll keep positive thoughts and hope a full recovery is on the horizon and do my best to stay consistent on this channel. Now, I've got plenty of home theater content coming your way, so stay tuned. Until next time, thank you for watching.